Okay, we'll start off this haul with the Everwing uh, Beast X220. This is a 5 inch drone that's supposed to be um, optimized for 5 to 6S LiPos. Okay, we got a couple sets of Gemfan 5042 props. Get a couple of battery straps. Comes with this uh, circular polarized antenna, kind of generic with an RPS semiconductor. Get your prop nuts, and it looks like you got. Uh, regular and reverse nuts and then you got took something here for like a battery pad on the bottom here's a quick look at the drone itself pretty nice uh as the box said it has a bunch of fly color components inside so we'll start off with the motors here these are kind of look like the bbb motors the three br motors um, but i think that these are branded fly color 2306 only 1800 kv and I think that's because it's uh, going to be designed for 5 or 6S. I uh, probably wouldn't recommend flying this on 4S. It's too low of a KV and it's kind of heavy. Uh, you got some fly color ESCs here. 50 amp, uh, 3 to 6S, and 32 bit. So they're Beetle Hell 32. And you got a, it looks like a generic, uh, it says it's a CCD camera, 600 TV lines. I don't know what that is, some kind of generic camera there. Uh, you've got... Uh, a four flight controller here. It looks like it's one with the PDB built in. So you got the ECs uh, soldered directly to the single board, and then you got a power switchable video transmitter that goes to 600 milliwatts. And this one is the Bind and Fly version, so I believe it comes with the FreeSky XM Plus receiver, and it's right there. And you got your little pigtail for your uh, circular polarized antenna. They, they've already got the uh, uh, XM Plus receiver antennas heat trunk to the zip ties and it looks like this one is designed for bottom mounted batteries. I'm going to put that battery pad here, probably use something else that looks a little too small or thin. Got a buzzer LED in the back and it looks like you got your battery cord soldered directly to the uh, flex controller ESC pads. You're going to need to probably secure this somewhere zip tie it so that you get some strain relief otherwise that if you rip that off of those pads or that board's done but yeah it looks looks really nice the motors have a hollow shaft set screw on the bottom yeah, i don't know anything about these motors they look like they have curved magnets and uh single stranded wire that one the bearing on that one sounds pretty good the bearing on this one does not sound so good you can kind of hear it rattling that one sounds okay. That one sounds okay. So this is the bind and fly version. It also comes in a plug and play version if you want that one instead and have you want to use your own receiver. I think the bind and fly only comes as a free sky receiver option. Okay, so I picked up some more of these um, HGLRC Flame 1106 6000 KV motors. This is the motor on the Hornet 120, which is a two and a half inch micro, but I want to um, try these out on a three inch size. Someone also was asking for some testing on this motor on a 3 inch prop for uh, efficiency testing so I'm going to be uh, including this as part of my series of motor efficiency tests on the 3 inch prop. Probably going to use the uh, Emacs of Vaughn props in this one so stay tuned for a build on this one that uh, will come up at some point. Okay so I just picked up uh, this uh, FreeSky R9 uh, M module and this is the non-EU version so this comes with the R9M module, goes to the back of your Tyrannus, and the R9 Slim receiver. So you get your manuals for the receiver and for the module. Here's the antenna for the module. And here's the module itself. Obviously here's the standard JR module, goes to the back of the Tyrannus. And I will also try this out on the uh, jumper radio, because my uh, module for the cross crossfire uh, module for that works on the jumper, so I'm imagining this will probably work as well. Got some wiring harnesses here for the receiver. And here's the receiver itself. Uh, this is the R9 Slim. It comes with some, uh, obviously, the, the JST connectors for those wiring harnesses, as well as the outputs here. You get the very large 900 megahertz antenna. This is, uh, I think it's the dipole version. The active portion's over here, and then you have your dipole on the other side over here. And I think this is connected via a micro FL connector right there, so it is replaceable, but it looks like it's glued on, and then you got this cover on here to secure it. 
in addition to the, the R9 module and the slim receiver, which comes in this package here, I also picked up some of the R9 mini receivers. Basically, it's like a same size as the Crossfire Nano receiver. It's very, very tiny. It's even smaller than the slim receiver. To be doing some tests on this equipment here in the near future. So if you have questions, let me know in the comment section below. Okay, so the guys over at Rotor Riot, specifically Tommy uh, Umagod, sent me some stuff. Uh, he sent me the 1104 7500 KB motors to test out. These are their new micro motor in their store, and then also the uh, Umagod uh, sticky pad. And this is, I think they're selling this for like 320 in their store. So you can see what the difference is between this one and some generic stuff I bought earlier that I kind of use here and there. I think this one has adhesive or something like that that will actually keep it stuck to the quad, but I'll have a video on this one too if you guys are interested in that. And here's a quick look at the motor, uh, three spoke design, open bottom design, only two holes uh, for mounting instead of four. And this is, I think, I believe it is OEM manufactured by T Motors, so as you can see it's pretty high quality. Bearings feel pretty smooth. You get silicone wire here for the motor wires. Pretty long, looks like about three inches or so. And yeah, I have a video on this, of course, uh, with some flight footage later. But this is basically just going to show you what the motor looks like. The hype tree, and I think it's called the dab. And I, you know, I I was not too uh, excited about this motor because. This is kind of an old stator size, and I, I think I mentioned that a while back. Um, I'll have a video and explain in a little more detail on what I was talking about in terms of the stator size, uh, the 1104 size. I kind of wish they would have come up with something like a 1304 or 1404 motor uh, for the micros, especially specifically the 1304. I think that's going to be the future of micros, uh, two and a half and three inch. Obviously, they're, they're marketing this motor for 2-inch micros, so that's going to be the difference there. Uh, but I'll have a video explaining all this stuff in a future video later. Okay, so i got a few more frames here from iFlight or C. This is their new Archer X5. It's a 5-inch uh, racing frame. So you get a battery strap and some stickers. Looks like they got a new uh, battery strap style here with the metal buckle instead of the plastic one. That's nice. Here's an explosion diagram of what the frame should look like, uh, how to put together all the screws and bolts and where everything goes. Uh, six millimeter arms it looks like. So yeah, obviously I'll cover all this in the review later. So interestingly, this kit comes with a couple of these forever tubes or for your antennas. You get this 3D printed part, uh, looks like a fin, goes on top of the top plate for turtle mode. And you get some 3D printed parts for like arm bumpers here. So you get a bag of uh, standoffs, uh, screws and nuts. Uh, you get a battery pad, another 3D printer part for your, um, looks like your VTX antenna and a couple of the uh, caps for the forever tubes. And then here's the carbon pieces. You got the arms here and you got some, I guess a spare set of arms. I'm thinking these are a little different. Yeah, they, these have, these arms have the little hooks on the end here and these don't. So maybe this is for saving weight. I think the 3D printer parts go on these arms. These are, I'm not exactly sure what the deal is with these. It's just like the, the same arms that these little end pieces are missing. Probably to save weight. And then this is the other side with the top and bottom plates. So yeah, not a lot of carbon pieces. This is probably going to be in that ultralight category. Okay, got two more frames here. They're, uh, one's the HL7 and then uh, HL5. So they're Two versions are basically the same kind of frame. Uh, one is with seven inch arms and the other one is with five inch arms. Uh, this one comes with a lot of stuff. Uh, stickers, you get uh, three battery straps. Uh, the new style here with the metal buckle. And here's a quick look at the explosion diagram. How I put the arms and body together. It kind of reminds me a little bit of what the chameleon looks like. So you get some 3D printed arm bumpers, uh, a little thing here for your VTX antenna, caps for the forever tubes, and some forever tubes. Some foam landing feet and a foam battery pad, and you get a bag of standoffs and screws and bolts. And here's all the uh, carbon pieces here. Uh, I'm not going to take everything out. Uh, I'll show this in the review, but uh, if you're curious what the drone looks like, I'll put a picture up here on the screen of what it looks like. Okay, so here's what uh, you get in the HL7 stickers. You get the explosion diagram. 
and uh, yeah just to show you guys it's pretty much the same frame just you get the longer 7 inch arms here instead of the 5 inch arms and again you get the three battery straps the forever tubes three printed arm bumpers more 3D printed parts here for your VTX antenna and the caps and you get uh, standoffs, nuts and bolts the same uh, foam landing feet and battery pad and basically it's just, it looks like maybe the body might be a little bit longer so I'll do a comparison and a review of the two frames and it does look like it's a little bit longer so that would make sense if it's a 7 inch frame you get longer arms perhaps a longer body but not 100% sure it just kind of looks like that on first glance, but yeah, I'll have reviews. I'll have one, actually I'll have one review video for both frames later on, so check this out in a little bit. Okay, so I picked up uh, some new stuff from Emacs, uh, the new props and this new uh, Baby Hawk R upgrade kit. So this includes the very long awaited two and a half inch arm upgrade kit. And you remember a while back I had the single unibody two and a half with the two and a half inch arms and they weren't really sure if they were going to make that or not because of the cost and they decided we're going to, we'll just make a, the uh, replacement arms. And this is actually better to do this this way. It's actually going to cost less. I think it's $15. You get the, uh, basically the replacement arms. So you get two sets of these. They're uh, front and back. And then you get two sets of the new two and a half inch uh, these Avon Rush props so and I don't think a lot of people have seen these these are tri-bladed props new design and then I also picked up uh, some of the two inch they're called the blur and this is also a tri-bladed design so I'll have videos on these coming up soon I'm going to take uh, one of my other, I have two of the Baby Hawk R's and I'm going to take the, uh, the last one that I have that's a 2 inch, convert it to a 2.5 and inch and we'll use these uh, new 2.5 inch props on those. Uh, I think the kit's a pretty good deal. You get the, the arm, I think it was, uh, you get the arm replacement arms, you get two sets of these 2.5 inch props. So it comes in a bag like this and the whole thing is $15. It's not too bad for that if you want to upgrade your Baby Hawk R from the 2 inch to the 2.5 inch. Okay, so I got some new motors in from Hobbymate. These are the 2207-1700KV. Okay, here's just a quick look at them. You get some pretty long motor wire here, 20 gauge wire. Uh, this motor kind of looks like a brother hobby motor to me. I don't know, what, what do you guys think? Single strand wire. Uh, I'm not sure if those are curved or flat magnets. Uh, pretty small air gap. Notching isn't too strong. You got a 16 by 19 hole pattern, uh, solid shaft, not a hollow core, and C clip on the bottom. So I'm going to probably be using this in some sort of a 6S build. I'm not sure yet, but uh, stay tuned and I'll have a video with this motor in there, probably uh, running a 6S battery. Okay, I got another micro motor here in from FlexRC. This is their 1102 12,500 kV. Uh, open bottom design should be very light and I'm going to be putting this on the uh, uh, the uh, Slim X build and I'm going to fly this on 2S so it should be really light um, not sure if this motor will be able to handle 2S but I think it will and uh, that should be an interesting video I'm not sure if the flight times are going to be so great at this high KV on 2S but um, it ought to perform pretty well on a light build so stay tuned for that video